The bus stops and the woman gets off with the girl child carried tight to her chest. No one else gets on or off. The bus pulls away and they're alone. There are white chickens and animal sounds and human sounds surrounding, and the girl weighs nothing in her arms. The woman stands where the bus left them for a long time, just looking, not sure which way to go. Mud streets and thatch roofs and tin roofs and smoke. Food is being cooked, but not for them. The woman chooses a direction and walks into the town. She thought she'd recognize more faces once they were here, but she doesn't recognize anyone. She had not counted on making this mistake. It is not yet dark, but coming, and sometimes she's surprised to turn a corner and run up against the forest's black wall. Or sometimes the forest lunges into town, cuts off a street, as if reclaiming what it once lost. There are children running, and dogs too, in the narrow paths and alleys. But all of them seem so far away, their barks and laughter distant echoes in a valley. This town, the woman reminds herself, is too small to get lost in. This town is too small to get lost in. Held tight to her chest, the girl child is a silence, arms fastened around the woman's neck and shoulders, one cool ear pressed to her cheek. There will be no other bus until morning. She barely weighs a thing. Like water in a leaky tub, the light drains from the air, grows thinner, people giving her space to pass as her hunger becomes a living thing in her belly, but she's ignored fiercer animals before. It is a tense, dimming hour of looking before she finally leaves the girl at a friendly-looking house, wide eyes gleaming with sympathy taking her in, then crosses back through town to a tin-roofed building with a brightly colored mural painted on its walls, green and yellow. Standing outside the building's door, she feels like the animals of the forest are taunting her. But this forest is made of paint. Inside is a packed dirt floor, a wooden stage, and little else. A man on stage runs records on some turntables. The music is loud, with a playful sort of swagger. But there is no one here to dance to the music but her. Distant echoes in the valley. The woman does not dance. Sometimes the man slips on a pair of chunky headphones and leans in close over the turntables. Then the music changes. The woman knows there is music in the cans, but it's a different music. What the man hears in the headphones changes the music in the room. She wants to hear those changing sounds, listen to what they say. What kind of sound can change the shape of a room? What song can become another song? It is not yet night but coming in a taunting forest of the night. She steps up to the stage and gestures that she'd like to try the headphones, to hear the music inside the cans. She points to her ears and points to his head. She nods and does it again, but the man pretends not to understand. The music becomes something else, then it becomes again. She turns away from the stage and sits on a bench along the back wall. She looks at her wide feet pressed into the dirt floor. The music sways in its hips, then it bounces on its heels. What can change a room? She wonders where the girl has gone. Then she remembers. There will be no bus until morning. Outside is finally night. She can hear it, their voices beyond the walls. She presses her feet into the dirt floor and waits for the room to fill with dancers. The music becomes, then becomes again. Then, like a spell, they are here.